everybody god bless you and welcome back to my youtube channel i am prophet shani beckford and in today's video i am going to be sharing with you on specific prophetic diets that will help to heighten to increase your spiritual sensitivity there are specific foods that god has given to prophets as dietary plans that helps their spiritual size their spiritual ability to be heightened and increased so if you want to grow in the prophetic you want to be able to attract the presence of god in a greater capacity there are certain specific food diets that god can reveal to you that you need to be eating and i'm going to share some of these with you in just a few but before i do that please make sure you go ahead and subscribe do not just watch the videos make sure you subscribe like the videos comment comment in the comment section more than once the more you engage with me is the more i know that what it is that i'm sharing with you guys are helping you as well as it does help youtube's algorithm to share the video so many more persons can be blessed also, if you believe that you're called to be a prophet, you're called to be a CEO, make sure you go to my website at shanibegfredministries.org to register for your prophetic mentorship. I do one-on-one -on -one prophetic mentorship for the prophetic deliverance, the school of the CEO, uh, study of angels and geology. If you're called to be a pastor, you're called to launch a church, but you're struggling to launch the church for church growth, make sure you go ahead and register for our short courses or certificate courses. And so that I that way I can be able to sit with you, train you, teach you. If you're lost, you're not sure where you are. You're not sure what to do and you need guidance, you need a direction, you need counsel. You can also go ahead to the website and register for a prophetic consultation. So there's something that I have designed to help every single one of you based on the level that you are on. All right. So without any further ado, I'm going to go ahead, reel the clip, come right back. I'm Prophet Shani Beckford. And as you guys can see in the title of today's video, I am sharing with you guys on prophetic dietary plans that helps prophetic people to grow in their prophetic gift in their calling to grow in spiritual sensitivity especially where their sight and relationship with god is concerned now i want you to understand that when we talk about the prophetic food is something that is very prophetic food is something that does a lot to you spiritually even naturally we understand where dietitians and doctors will tell us you have to be careful what you're putting into your body you have to be careful and and to ensure that you're eating a healthy and a balanced diet because it can affect your health it can affect your lifespan it can affect you in so many different ways so the same way in which food can affect your body physically it is the same way it affects you spiritually no in a first corinthians 6 and verse 19 the bible tells us to that it tells us that your body is the temple of the lord and so if your body is the temple of the lord you have to become a living sacrifice to him this means you have have to ensure that you're guarding you're monitoring and you're paying close attention to whatever it is that you're placing on the inside of your body where food is concerned now this is the importance of food as a prophet understand that every prophet every true authentic prophet that is in the earth realm god has given them a dietary plan whether it is something that is temporary or it is something that is more permanent so there are certain foods that god has told certain prophets to abstain from there are certain foods that some prophets cannot touch any at all and there are some foods that God will tell you do not eat this for a couple of days do not eat this for a couple of months and as he does that there's something greater that he wants to place on the inside of you spiritually no concerning our food concerning abstaining from certain food and knowing what to eat prophetically it's not just a matter of the food per se but it has a lot to also do with spiritual discipline and spiritual and consecration as a prophet of god you have to ensure that there is a certain level of there's a certain level of discipline rather that the spirit of god requires from prophets a certain discipline that will catapult and that will determine what dimension or what rank do you hold in the realms or the dimensions of the spirit also based on the rank or the dimension that you're called to operate from there's a certain level of consecration that is required of you and so as you consecrate there are certain food types that you have to abstain from as the spirit of god will will lead you to if you study throughout the bible you will find that every major and every major prophet in the bible they had a specific dietary plan from the holy spirit and i'm going to share with you what this does so in luke 24 and 30 it says when he was at the table with them he took bread and gave thanks broke it and began to give it to them 
Then their eyes were open and they recognized him and he disappeared from their sight. There's a certain dietary plan concerning our bread that if you study throughout the scripture, you will see that when we, when, 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 when we, when we see Jesus uh, eating, there's always or most times you see where bread is a part of the diet, especially unleavened bread is a part of the diet. And it plays a very important role in your spiritual sight and in the prophetic. Note that the scripture said that the moment he broke and he gave them bread for them to eat, the Bible says that their spiritual eyes became opened and immediately they began to realize or recognize who exactly it is that they were sitting with. This means that for the entire time the disciples were with Jesus and though they saw him teach powerful things, though they saw where he was uh, healing the sick and casting devils out and all the amazing ministration that he was doing prophetically, they still did not know who he was until they came into this place of eating a specific food. It triggered their spiritual sense of sight to begin to open and become intense, intensified or magnified that they could see exactly who was with him. So the Bible tells us that having eyes but they see not, having ears but they hear not, because there are many quote and quote prophets or Christians in general, they have eyes but they cannot see and perceive spiritual mind. Matters. They have ears, but they cannot see and perceive spiritual matters. And so your food intake has a lot to do with this. As I mentioned, every major prophet in the Bible has a prophetic diet. If we go back from the very beginning in Genesis, in Genesis chapter 1, even when God created Adam, God gave Adam a dietary plan. And this is why you find that there are many prophets and there are many people that say, I don't eat meat. I don't eat this. The only thing that I eat is vegetable and fruit because many persons are going after this Adamic diet and this is what it says Genesis 1 30 it says when he I'm sorry um no, that's that's Luke. It says, and God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of the earth, and every tree in which is the fruit of the, in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you, and it shall be your food. It shall be for your food. So we see that the trees and the herbs, the natural fruits and and herbs that God had created, God said to Adam, This shall be food for you. He never told him about any of the other types of meats or cackles of the air or the, 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 the water or the land. He said, this is what shall become your food. If you study Adam, the first man that God had created, Adam had a certain level of access. He had a certain, uh, he operated from a certain realm of dominion that not many prophets had operated in throughout the Bible. The, 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 greater, the greatest level or the greatest manifestation of power that God has given to man was dominion. There are different levels of power that is given to man in the earth realm. You have uh, God's power in the area of ministry, for example, is called anointing. To be anointed means that you're powerful. God's power in the area of warfare is called might. His power in the area of, 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 of law is called authority. His power in the area of territories and people and resources is called dominion. So when God created Adam, the, the level of power, the highest level of power that God gave to him was not anointing. It wasn't might. It wasn't authority. But God gave to him dominion. He said, have dominion and subdue all the things that I've given to you on the face of the earth. So he had authority over every single thing that was crawling, that was living, that was breathing, that God had created. So we understand that his diet had a lot to do with this. Moses had a diet. If you study the book of Leviticus chapter 11, you will see where God will prohibit Moses from eating certain things. Moses was a prophet that was very, very powerful, one that was sent to deliver an entire nation. And so we see where God gave him a specific diet. Do not eat this kind of meat. Do not eat that kind of meat because it is unclean. Then he goes on and he says to him, to Moses, for seven days, eat bread without yeast. As Moses ate this bread, later the scripture continues to say that he was filled with the knowledge and the spirit of God because he followed the dietary plan that God has given to him as a prophet. Let's take it a bit further. I want to share with you uh, more specifically um, Daniel, the Daniel diet. Daniel diet is one of the most powerful diets and I want to share this with you. 
Daniel was a prophet that challenged, that challenged kings. Daniel was a prophet that would not submit to the authority of kings uh, to be deceived into their man-made laws and regulations concerning when he should pray and when he should not pray. Daniel understood the system and the protocols, the principles that followed whatever food he ate. And so watch what the scripture says. Daniel chapter 1, I think we're going to go from verse 8. We're going to go from verse 8. So this scripture tells us that Daniel refused the food that was prepared by King Nebuchadnezzar. There are certain food types that certain prophets have to refuse and cannot eat because it will impair their spiritual sight. It will cause the spirit or the presence of God not to dwell among them as strongly as he really wants to. So watch this. Daniel 1 verse 8. I'll read a few verses and you'll get how powerful and how important food types is as a prophet of God. It says, but Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine. And he asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself this way. So there's a certain food that the royal people ate, that the king and his men ate, that if Daniel ate it, it would have defiled him. Now, I want you to capture this. For you and I, there's nothing that we are prohibited to eat. As regular man or woman of God, as regular Christians, people just living in the earth or casually on a day-to-day -day basis, the Bible says that God has given all given us all this food we can bless it purify it and eat it that's fine people like mark on the other hand mark tells us in mark 7 15 there is nothing that enters a man from the outside that defiles him rather it is what comes from inside the man that defiles him so mark goes on and he says he will eat whatever food it is once he purifies it he will eat it and nothing at all is going to affect him there's nothing that will defile or affect him because god has created all this food for you and i to eat but Daniel played a greater role in the prophetic even than Mark did. Mark was a powerful man. We see Moses, he played a greater role. Samuel, a greater role. John the Baptist, a greater role. Jesus, even a far greater role. Now look at Daniel, he's saying, this food I cannot eat because it will defile me. If someone else eats this food, it doesn't defile them. So based on your own prophetic conviction, if God tells you do not eat this, then it is something that will defile you, that will contaminate you. But that doesn't mean that if someone else has it, it's going to affect them. When you, you cannot force your prophetic or your spiritual conviction onto someone else. Because if God tells you, do not eat chicken, do not eat pork, the only thing you should eat is fish, fruits, and vegetables. You cannot make this a ritualistic thing where your entire family can eat it. No one in your church can eat it. You cannot force onto someone else something that God has given to you specifically as an instruction. So you have to pay attention to that so let's continue let's analyze this now god had caused the officials to show favor and compassion to daniel but the official told daniel i am afraid of my lord the king who has assigned your food and drink why should he see you looking worse than the other men your age the king would have not the king would then have my head because of you verse 11 Daniel then sent to the guard, whom is the chief official? Let me skip this part. He said, please, verse 12, Daniel 1 and verse 12, it says, please test your servants for 10 days. Give us nothing but vegetable to eat and water to drink. Then compare our appearances with what the other young men have eaten concerning the royal food and treat your servants in accordance with what you see. So he agreed and he tested them for 10 days. Let's continue. It gets better. At the end of the 10 days, they looked healthier and better. This is Daniel who refused to defile himself with certain foods. At the end of the 10 days, they looked healthier and better, nourished than the other young men who ate the royal food. So the guard took away their choice food and the wine and they wine and they were to drink and gave them vegetables instead to these four men god gave knowledge and understanding and all kinds of literature and learning and daniel could understand visions and dreams of all kinds based on the food that daniel was led not to eat by the spirit of god prophetically the food that he chose to eat that god has assigned for daniel to eat vegetables and water this caused him to come into a realm where the Bible said in verse 17 that God increased them in knowledge and understanding of all kinds of literature and learning. So they came into a place of spiritual intelligence. 
I'm not doing a course um, tonight. We started yesterday and we're doing it tonight. I'm teaching on prophetic, the prophetic, the prophetic intelligence of God. There's an intelligence system in the realm of heaven that gives you knowledge and insight and foresight that gives you wisdom into certain things that God wants to reveal to us. Knowledge concerning the scripture, knowledge concerning the society, the economy, knowledge concerning governmental affairs. The spirit of God is a very intelligent spirit that knows information that has secrets and mysteries into things of the past the present and the future that no one else has ever seen this is why the bible speaks about uh, the bible speaks about things that god will reveal to us that eyes have not seen ears have not heard neither has it entered into the heart of men it is for those prophets that will understand their position in the place and in the things of god knowing what your position is as a prophet and wanting to grow in your prophetic mantle for your prophetic eyesight to be open your prophetic senses to be activated for your prophetic senses to be alert and quickened there's a specific diet that the spirit of god wants to give to you so this can help to bring you into a place of greater greater projection into the things of the earth as the spirit of the lord will will allow now let's let's take it a bit further so Daniel had a specific diet because he because he submitted and he surrendered to this diet. The Bible said that he he received knowledge and understanding of all kinds of literature and learning. It also said that Daniel could not understand vision and dreams of all kinds, which means the gift of interpretation was increased on his life because of the prophetic diet that he had submitted to. If you study the life of Jesus, Jesus had a diet. For many many scriptures, if you read uh, according to Luke and according to the gospel of the accounts of Jesus even the last supper the meal that Jesus had it was unleavened bread and wine I'm sure that there were other kosher or Jewish foods that were on the table but the Bible speaks specifically about bread and wine with all the occasions of Jesus being with his disciples and with the people so there's always a part of his diet always has to do with unleavened bread and wine that was diluted with water when Jesus was was, uh, with his disciples, which he was a lot of the times, a lot of his disciples were fishermen. And you can only assume that fish was definitely a part of his diet. The Bible said that once he was going across the Sea of Galilee and that, the, that, that Luke, he broiled the fish for Jesus. So Jesus had a specific diet. As a prophet of God, there's certain foods you cannot eat. There's certain foods that in the natural, it makes you lethargic. It makes you sleepy. It makes you heavy. It contaminates you your body it messes with your system it affects you spiritually as well if you're constantly eating burgers and chips and chipotle and all this kind of oily and fatty food it is going to block you spiritually i'm not saying you can't eat certain things from time to time but if this is the only thing that you're eating if you're not careful based on what you're feeding yourself physically and spiritually you will find that your prayer life is starting to decrease your word study life is starting to decrease if you do happen to study the word of God there's no revelation that is coming from this because spiritually you have become clogged and lethargic you are you're not in a place where you're you you're in a spiritual slumber you cannot focus you cannot pray you're struggling to spend time with God if you realize that when you do not eat certain foods and you go into natural diet, it gives you, when you eat a certain diet, it gives you a certain level of energy and stamina to do what you need to get done. The same thing applies spiritually. There are certain foods that God will prohibit you to eat from time to time as a prophet that charges you spiritually that gives you that spiritual energy to go on and do the assignment and the task of the holy spirit so then my question and my encouragement to you is what is it that god is telling you not to eat what is it that you're eating that is affecting you spiritually and prophetically what is it that God is saying, do not eat this? What is it that he's saying, this is what you need to eat? There are certain food types that attract the presence of God. There are certain food and fruits, even fruit, that attracts the angelic and the presence of God. Now, you have to ensure that you're spending time in the presence of God. You have not received this revelation. You have not received this knowledge. And the Spirit of God is saying to you, this is something that I have been speaking to you concerning. I know that some of you are listening to this video right now and you're thinking, 
you know the lord actually the lord told me to just stop eating red meat for a while i don't know who i'm talking to but if this has blessed you or this has encouraged you or it was a form of confirmation make sure you go ahead and leave it in the comment section but you have to pay attention to the food types that you eat you cannot eat spoiled foods. You cannot eat foods because, oh, today's the expiration date and I don't want to waste my money. There's some things that people eat that I don't understand how people are eating this food. You have to be very careful of what kind of food and fruits you're taking in. The sour fruits, the bitter stuff. You have to be careful what you're eating. There's certain things like salt. There's certain things like grapes. There's certain things like apples. There's certain things like honey. Their fruits, their fruits, food types and food groups out there that does something spiritually to you. The Bible said that uh, when Jonathan went to battle that he didn't get the instruction of his father and he took his staff or his sword and he dipped it into honey because he was weak and tired and drained. When he dipped it into the honey and he opened his and he ate it the Bible said immediately his eyes became opened. So there are literal foods out there that causes you to grow in your spirituality as a prophet and as a seer that you have to pay attention to. And I'm not going to list out everything to you on this video. Uh, perhaps for those that are taking my prophetic sessions and you have specific questions, but I'm not going to put it out there. I think this is prophetic class stuff. So I won't share everything out um, on the platform. But I want you to leave in the comment section what is something that the Lord has led you and encouraged you to abstain from where food is concerned and how has it impacted and helped you on your prophetic journey. So make sure you comment and let me know how this has helped you in any way at all remember to go to my website register for your consultation session register for your prophetic mentorship or deliverance and geology whatever course you're interested in and i'd love to i look forward to working with you i love working with you guys so i'll see you um perhaps in the near future in one of my one-on-one -on -one sessions god bless you guys thanks for watching this video have a wonderful rest of the day